<laughs> so tell us a little bit about your studio or artist studios in general. Well, I think I counted once. I think there's been about 20 of them. So I, I'm not even sure the, the, the longest I've ever had a studio might have been at the Arts Factory where I was there for six months, six years, yeah. excuse me, six years in one studio. But I, I think all a studio is is where you do your work. It, it doesn't, there's nothing, it doesn't have to be a sacred space. I think a lot of people make sure, think if it's a sacred space and they'll make their work more meaningful or something. And I've, I think I've done some of my best work in some of the most awkward studios. This right here is a really small, cramped little studio. It's just the living room and the house I'm living in. And I put plastic up there and down here and then these boards and boards up the wall for a painting wall. And I like painting on a wall rather than an easel, obviously, because partly because of the scale. But even still, I mean, even some of your smaller scale paintings, you would you would still do that on the wall yeah. too? I'm very comfortable there. I can go sit there. That's that's enough of a distance away to look at the painting and take it all in. And uh, as I mentioned to you before, one of the lamest excuses for not painting that you hear all the time. You know, I don't have a place to paint. <laughs> the only the only place you paint is between your ears. Mm -hmm. We've all got that much space. Yeah. And you can, if you really want to paint, you can do it in your backyard. Well, you, know, you can open up the trunk of your car. You can put a piece of plastic down in your kitchen. And the impressionists went outside. Yeah, well, they, yeah. They, 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 that's partly because they liked it out there, yeah. they, the light thing, yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of those guys actually still pull their stuff back into the studio. Oh, yeah, yeah. A little refinement and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you see a sculpture somewhere and it looks, works better from certain angles than others? Yeah. To me, a really good piece of sculpture, especially any any piece of sculpture, is equally interesting from any vantage point. But painting is a different thing, and you're you're trying to make that interesting from straight out from it. Yeah. But one one thing about these paintings is, typically people have a standard distance at which they look at a painting, and sometimes if it's a painting with a lot of traditional detail, rendered detail, yeah. they'll come in and they look close. But if it's an abstract painting, they almost never will, yeah. in, unless I encourage them to get up close and look at some of the yeah. funky little things that happen up close. Because there's a whole, there's a whole different world. It's like, it's like looking at, at, uh, looking at something with your eyeball and then looking at it under a microscope. It's an entirely different world, and I, I think these paintings actually have that quality. But, you know, the other night uh, you worked on, I think it was maybe even on this painting, or perhaps another one, I think it was this one anyway, so I came in and you were sort of looking at the painting, and we began to look at particular small little areas though, I mean, you know, just, yeah. the, just the way the, the paint sort of found a path after yeah. you, and, um, and you see this a lot in Japanese landscape painting and sure. painting that we've talked about before. So. Your painting still, and what I like about your, your mode of abstraction, is there are these broad swaths of color and patterns and bolder shapes, but then you provide all these other kinds of things. Little things. These little really things that really become quite intriguing. I think so. I don't know if you noticed, but that area that you were looking at that you liked, mm -hmm. I, I kind of fucked it up. Yeah. What, <laughs> what, would you went and reworked it? Well, that, see, I, in order to get that lighter, yes. you know, so it would tie in with what's going on over here a little better, um, I, I did a pale color and then washes over top of it. Oh, okay. To give it that, this kind of a look. Yeah. If I would have just used a lighter color, yeah. you know, it would be, and, and there will be some heavy paint over that probably at some point, but um, yeah, so I thought about you when I was yeah. destroying that area. <laughs> yeah. He, he, but he but like we were talking yeah. about, and I realize we're getting sidetracked here a little bit. It's okay. One of the, one of the things that, that, People, aspiring artists, I think, get trapped by is they put something down that they really like and they become married to it, even when it doesn't work. It's too precious. Yeah. And, and, and you, you need to... Well, on these, um, if I have something that's precious, if, and I, and, but it's not working in the whole painting, if I can put a few friends somewhere else, mm -hmm. something they can play off of, whether that's a color thing or, or, a, or some kind of shape or type of stroke or something yeah. that will make sense of it, I'll do that. But if not, you just gotta, 
you got to throw it away. Yeah. You got to be you got to be willing to just throw anything away. And and that's the, that's the reason in a, in in your studio you, you got to look first, understand what it is you're going to do. If you're if you're representing something, you need to understand exactly what you're looking at. That's an I mean that's what defines the visual arts and just the way you work. It is about seeing, observing, yeah. thinking about what's there. And of course, the more you see, the more you draw upon those visual experiences over life too. So with your own work, because this is the thing people have difficulty in understanding when they look at abstract painting, whoever it is, is it seems so arbitrary. Where would you have started? Where do you finish? Yeah. But there's a deliberation going on with constantly. It. Much there. I would say a hundred times more decisions in a painting like this than there is in rendering something. Rendering something, you're 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 trying to render something. You're trying to put stuff down in the right place so it looks similar to what you're painting. These, you know, it's alive. It's constantly fluid. You know, I'll get toward the end of a painting and I'll I'll make a major change. And uh, but the the. The flow. Let's say I wrote an artist statement one time that said something about how, how the, the the flow is intuitive yet deliberate, and um, the outcome is outcome is probably more of a surprise to me than it is to the to the viewer. But yet on the other, this is the thing that the head game I I play in there, the, the tapes that go in my head when I get, contemplate these. The, these things are covered with thousands of little accents. But yet everything on that canvas is the result of a very deliberate act that I committed. And so how much of it was my intention, how much was not? How much was accident, how much was not? I think it was Pollock that said there is no, he says, I deny the accident. That may be a little a little precocious or... But, but I, I but, think I understand what he's saying because yeah. You know, he is still that force behind the accident. So yeah. his movement caused this, mm -hmm. and it's not like everything that comes out of us has to be yeah. this intellectual decision that I want this to look this way. Yeah, these little things that I'm infatuated with, like these two little guys right here, that these little energies, and they, they some some way or another they get faces. It's amazing how how often there will be a little opening where there would be an eyeball where there's no paint. It just kind of seems to open up. That's certainly not any intention that I know of, mm -hmm. but you can always find little faces in them, and these little energies, and, and and there there's but there's definitely a way of putting the paint on the end of the brush and flicking it a certain way so that the so the brush makes contact a certain way so that a certain amount of paint will will kind of fly in a certain way that kind of amuses me. And uh, so when it comes right down to it, when I'm when I'm doing these, I'm, I'm going back and forth between trying to put something up that, with a little reckless abandon, reeling the design back in so it makes a cohesive painting, leaving a little bit of tension, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, just amusing myself with seeing how many little how many different ways I can surprise myself. I, the paint that goes down on the canvas. Well, I, I like that part. And that part, that part is the fun. Yes. It, it, it's it's just, it's just like a, a little kid out there, you know, blowing dandelions and mm -hmm. seeing where they go. Yeah. 